So, hey, guys, I'm here with uh, some of the, the writer and uh, executive producer of New, New Bosch Legacy, uh, Henry and Tom, Henry, Bernard, Tom Bernardo and Henry Baston. Yes. Make sure, yeah, make sure I get that right. <laughs> uh, again, hey, how you doing? I'm Terrell, Big Gold Belt Media. Uh, I'm here to ask you guys all of the hard-headed questions that all the fans have been wanting to, to get in deep into, especially involved in this show. Um, one um congratulations on season two uh you know especially in this era of television where you just never know when the switch is going to get pulled you know it's always nice to have that 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 security um you know especially as a fan myself watching you know now that we're in this era of like while you're in the middle of watch the season the season you're watching it's like you know you episode three it's like oh we're not doing another one and then it kind of like pulls the sails out of you sometimes the wind out of you i don't even feel like watching it now but either way um my first question is uh, with with the exec executive producer and the writer for this show, uh, what was something that you guys wanted to make sure that the fans got more of in season two? And I, like I said, I, I finished watching it myself um, and, you know, trying to go back and watch everything. But what did you, what did you want to make sure the fans got more of going into season two? I think one of the sort of heartbeat of this show and this series, and it's kind of evolved is the relationship between Maddie and her father, uh, Harry Bosch. And I think that that relationship is really a lifeline in, in the world to Harry. So putting them in the circumstances that we did early in the, the very heightened intense circumstances that we did very early in the season, and then pursuing the consequences and the emotional aftermath of that, I feel is revealing sides to this character we haven't seen before so that was exciting for me as a writer to be able to say i want to go you know we're going to go in this direction of of sort of exploring this character in a different way and the audience has been on this journey with them so i'm hopeful that they'll continue to be and that it will be a satisfying part of it and that they'll see sides to them that they've never seen before yeah and also i think you know uh, this was the second season we also had the room to expand our our new characters. You know, uh, Harry Bosch, Money Chandler, and Madison came from the old universe, and but we have these great side characters. Uh, for instance, Stephen Chang, who plays Mo, who you know we always intended from day one, he should be more than a sidekick. But of course, you do a first season, you need to introduce the new world. But in this, in the second season he gets legs of his own and he, you know, delivers the goods. And I think we have a great storyline with him that really puts, you know, he becomes a full, full fledged character with flesh and bone on his body. And um, Stephen Chang has brought that. So expanding this universe slightly and starting building that out, just as we did with Bosch back in the day with Jamie Hector and the other actors, right. it became an ensemble. And I think that's where we're going now as well. Uh, but between the two of you, just just work, you know, working on this for so long, has there has there been any like times where you guys have just, I, I guess I don't want to use the word creative differences, but like where there was something somebody said no, and then you know somebody said yes, and then that wound up really working out for the show overall. Yeah, Tom wanted to blow up a car up on Mulholland once. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back. It's like why why? Oh no. <laughs> you just 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 blew just blow up a car in the middle of this. <laughs> um and, and I'm sure I, I you know in this age of digital content, I'm sure you guys get fan letters and stuff. Uh, you know, it maybe you know, I don't know how it works now, emails or you know how it works. Um, and I'm sure there's been like, you know, petitions and stuff to kind of like make sure you guys never touch a certain character, don't kill off a character. What what do what do you say like the is the most like which character on, or in the show so far you feel like you've gotten a lot more like reception towards to like never just touch or you know take them off the show well i i think you get that all the time and i think people you know the gut instincts is of course protect harry bosch at all costs right. he is the centerpiece of that but uh, you know going back to creative differences no i i don't think not on a fundamental level because i think we started this a decade ago and w i think one of the reasons of the success of this show we all saw the same show and that came from michael Connelly's books he had created a character that we all we read him we saw him the same way. We saw what's important with this character. Why do we love him? Uh, what does he symbolize? So we can kind of 
we gather around that campfire and that's where we start. And then of course we, you know, have many and lengthy discussions, but should we go in this direction? I mean, one big discussion that we had going into season one was, do we keep Bosch's house or not? Because we wanted to do certain changes to, so it didn't just feel like the same show over again. It was important to create a new show. So we had, and I, I think if anything, going back to your questions, like, have we gotten any reactions? Yeah taking Bosch's house out has been a major one. People were fucking livid about it. It's like, you know, that's that's his home base. That's his eagle's nest. And you dared to not have him there. And, you know, not to say too much, but I think people are going to be very excited to see that, you know, that red tag might be coming off his house. Now, like you said, you mentioned the word, you know, Bosch University, you know what I mean? Like, no, is, is that kind of hinting at like side characters getting their own show uh, in the future endeavor? Well, you know, with the success of the show or, you know, uh, really uh, our network has asked us to start looking into it, how we can expand this universe. Uh, Michael Conley has a rich universe of books that has existing characters in it, uh, but also new characters. So, yes, there's definitely discussions ongoing about like expanding this this great Michael Conley universe. Now, something that's also, you know, I was thinking, I was wondering about was the Bosch legacy show itself. Was there any discussion early on to just have this bit come back and just be like a two hour movie or something like a special versus, you know, going into back into a serialization after, you know, that, you know, six or seven seasons of the first, the first uh, initial show. Go ahead, Henry. Yeah, you well, no, it, no, how this actually came to be is that we had, decided together with Amazon that seven, season seven of the original show was going to be the last one. It was very important for us to make sure that once that show was going to end, that we could write to that to get like a satisfaction, a satisfactory ending to the original show. But just around that is when Freebie as the new Amazon network right. wanted to launch and they, they reached out to us and say, Hey, we would be interested if you have an idea for, for, for a spinoff or a new version of this. Uh, and that was always intended as, uh, as a, t a TV show. And, you know, we were tasked with coming back with an idea if we could find it, that could be a new show, but still bring the DNA and the fans that originally watched Bosch and that became legacy. I mean, there's been discussions about doing a movie, but I think any movie about this universe will probably be just a standalone right. and that would be fun of doing, but <clears throat> Legacy was always intended as as a TV show. And then we've been blessed that it was successful. We got a second season and we're about to start writing, uh, picking up the pens on, on the third season now. So, you know, it it's it keeps going. I, I like the I like to know there's more meat on the bones after, you know, I I, I get through my appetizer. You know what I mean? Like if I'm halfway through it, like, okay, I, I look forward to another season. Uh Tom, I, I, I see here, like, you got a whole uh, cheat code back here for the show. I don't know if that's related to the show itself, <laughs> uh, you know, in, in any notes. I mean, that's typically how you would see your writer's room. Um, I'm in the room right now. Uh, and after five months on strike, I was, it's been great to step back in here. Bad. It's like, like uh, stepping out on a beach after a long blue winter. Um <laughs> we see behind us is um the episodes 301 302 303 304 we got together for about two months prior to the strike and we started as as a team of writers uh breaking story so these are very early sort of iterations of those episodes but uh all these cards represent uh different scenes and they're color-coded uh per different characters and storylines so um it's fun to talk about where the things that we just delivered in season two and to have a sense of where this world's going to go next. Absolutely. Well, look guys, congratulations on season two. Again, I absolutely loved it. You know, start to finish. Um, you know, I hope the fans get to, when they get to see this as well, see how great of a job that you guys did, the work that you put in, you could tell that, you know, the love is definitely there for this. This is not just a job for you. You actually do care about this universe, this, these characters. So uh, thank you once again, I appreciate your hard work. Uh, thank, thank you for, for thank taking you. time. Appreciate thank it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good day.